So, um, workplace uses of Moodle is a really a weird one because actually most higher ed and further ed also use it internally as much as they use it in teaching students. I think virtually every university that I've dealt with over the last eight years use it for staff training before the staff actually even train um, their, or start teaching their students. So I've always found Moodle in the workplace a bit weird in that respect. But moving swiftly along. First, um, he did what role you're in, I'm going to do what sector you're in. So back to the mobile app, please, and go and vote. <laughs> OK, so if you can quickly go to the mobile app, please. There we go. Got a few higher ed, government, corporate. Pardon? No, no. Not unless you've got multiple personalities. Oh, OK. <laughs> That's good. Nice to meet you all. Okay, so we've got a mix here of different levels. We've no K-12, which is pretty normal for the middle mode. I think it's really interesting that there are so many ways that I've seen Moodle used in, in organizations. I mean, if, if we look at the first one there, it's mentioning like hiring process. Anyone here use Moodle in their hiring process? Okay, so one of the things I've seen there is that they actually use, for example, questionnaire and quiz and assignment when people are applying for jobs. They're uploading their CVs, they're filling in pre-interview questionnaires, they're taking um, either knowledge quizzes or even corporate knowledge or sector knowledge quiz, um, could be technical ones as well. And maybe they're being asked to, I know when I was hiring developers a few years back, I used to set them a task before I would take them on board. And they would have to actually submit that code in advance before the interview because I'd get them to go through it. So Moodle was able to be part of that hiring workflow. And it's just, it's just a really easy, easy way to do it. One of the others is product rollout. Who here uses Moodle for any product rollout, teaching their staff about product? Any, yeah, okay. Anyone here use um, Moodle for teaching their staff how to use Moodle? You're all using it for product training. <laughs> yeah? Because <laughs> um, you're teaching them how to teach online and how to use the system. So that's, that's what it is. So it, it's, it's interesting that people don't necessarily correlate what they do with maybe how other, others might describe it. What about regulatory compliance? Now, what I mean for this is health and safety training. That someone goes in and they have to do that or they're not allowed to lift that box or climb up that ladder, or in the case of Aer Lingus in Ireland, they had their pilots do a one-year, um, what was a ground school training, and every year, if they didn't complete it on time, they weren't flying home the next day, because Moodle updated their HR system directly to allow them to continue flying. So, um, I remember they were giving a presentation about some of their pilots frantically in Amsterdam, <laughs> completing their online courses at 2 and 3 a.m. So, what about professional development for, yeah, okay. Informal learning communities or that dirty word, communities of practice? I've always found that a bit of a strange word. What, communities of practice, does it mean that they still haven't got it right? Um, I don't know, it's, uh, but I, I do like this whole infernal, the sort of informal learning. It's the social learning where you have people sort of trying to share good practice perhaps. And what about corporate structured learning places? This is where it's a full um, structure of sales departments and product departments, all that sort of stuff, one or two. So these are some of the types of things that people use Moodle for. But the interesting thing, when you flip this on its head, it's actually often very, the same, very much the same kind of tasks that they do. So for all of them, when you've got booking training. So are any of the Catalyst people here still? Okay, sorry. Um, so I'll just jump through those. So let's see. So let's, sorry. Um, so if we look at sort of being able to, that they want to be able to set up certain classes, the staff might be able to book them, or even sometimes their boss might want to book them onto something. But you want to track people who are attending. 
So a really simple one, you could use a choice and say, hey, we're doing four training sessions next week, Monday to Thursday, choose one of them. That's a nice straightforward way. It doesn't have the same level of sort of reporting and flexibility as other systems, but it, it could work. Another one of them is the scheduler activity. And these are, this is a plugin which you can then schedule certain things and have people sign up to them. And of course, with our lovely contrast for the projector here, I'm not sure if you can see that at all, but it's this bright green lights with pink floating stuff. No? Um, sorry. And then you've got the face-to-face -face activity. I have to put a comment there because it's not really supported very well. It's, um, and as Stacy actually says in, in the thing, but it is really very, very good. Um, so I like it. Of all of these systems, I like it the most. And it's much more traditional. You set up a room, you, you have your, your seats available, you can do things like waitlisting, signing up, and that's really very, very powerful. So any chance you can give them a hug and persuade them to do more updates. <laughs> okay, so that's those. I mean, what do you think about those sort of mechanisms, be it core or any of the plugins? Is there anything which you think, hmm, well, that wouldn't work for this? Anybody? Okay. So what about certification? Well, certificates and in general being able to issue that, you want to be able to brand them, you want to be able to customize what appears on them. And there's a few certificates. Um, I don't know where you were in the, the session where Michael was talking about the certificate module and the changes that are happening there. I'll mention that again in a moment. But one of the things you could do is issue badges. Now, the benefits of badges are quite simple. They're easy to implement. You can set a criteria, and they're verifiable. So when someone goes to put a badge in their backpack or wherever they put it, that URL calls back to Moodle to prove they've done it. And um, one of the things I say is that's really good, but as someone else mentioned, do it properly. Good design, good marketing, really don't just go to something like openbadges.me and design something, unless you're a graphic designer, and then you'll be doing it in Illustrator anyway. But the cons are open badges aren't well known. There's a project done with a lot of school kids, and they had no clue to them, they were just cute graphics. But that's okay. What about a certificate? Well, there's a plugin in Moodle for called Certificate, and you can configure it to a certain extent. There's also um, one of the variations, a thing called Simple Certificate, and it's very well supported, and it's the one I prefer if you can't get that from my tone, because literally, you can upload a background, and then anything that appears on it, is you have a HTML area, and you can drop in like variables of the person's name, the course name, and so on. So it's, if you can do HTML on a background image, you're a winner. So if you can use Microsoft Word, you can use this. It's that easy. Um, but all the, with all third-party plugins, there's pros and cons. And that's literally the kind of sort of configuration you can do. It can look really nice, so it comes down to how good is your background. Then you have the certificate activity, which Mark Nelson, the guy from HQ in Perth, um, he's the one who looks after this, as you can see, on a huge amount of sites. Um, it is up to date, but it's, it's not as friendly to use. But, so what he's doing at the moment, he's been working on one where you have literally a visual WYSIWYG editor for doing the layout. Super cool and sexy. So we're hoping that he'll get that into 3.1. Fingers crossed. He's got a bit of work still to do in it, but it is really nice. And then there'll be a core, because that's one of the things. Both of these are outside core, so having something in core would be very nice. Oh, and apologies. Some people don't like me calling technology sexy, but this is sexy. Trust me. So progress monitoring. Yeah? Hmm? <laughs> Your time is wrong, Matt. Good, fine. So what about the requirements for tracking progress? Well, I think it comes down to these three things. You want the students and you want the teachers or the learners and the facilitators to be able to see things. You've got activity completion, which I love, and I'll zip through this. You've also got the progress bar, which of course, is Michael here or is he in the next door? No. Oh, he's hiding in the middle. Okay, there, it's all his fault. Um, it's great, I love it. It's um, 
It's on every site that I know that I can influence the people to put it in because it just really helps the students to know where they are and what they've got left to do. I think you call it a sort of a time management tool more than, yeah, it's just really very nice. If you haven't used it, where have you been for the last two years? Um, and that's how it can look on their dashboard. They can see multiple progress bars. I just love it. And then from the reporting, who here used Google Analytics on their website? Okay. How many use it within Moodle? How many use it with this plugin within Moodle? Okay. So what this does, it takes it to a completely different level. Moodle URLs have like slash course, slash view, dot PHP, and it's sort of an unreadable URL. So what this does, it converts them into something readable that will give you much better reporting. So you can group categories together, group quizzes across categories, do pivot table reporting, and be able to start like having league tables between different programs and stuff. It's really quite cool. So if you haven't played around with it, go play around with it. And the guy who's um, behind this is sitting over there, so you can make him blush. <laughs> So I love this one in particular, where you can literally watch them go from page to page, and you know because of the name. You don't have to guess, what course is that? Like, it's ID equals 27, you know? And then you've got configurable, configurable reports. And I love this as well, but I just find it a little bit hard for those who don't do SQL. But there's a lot of things you can just do without having that sort of knowledge as well. So 